Because of the tides, safety launches were on permanent standby throughout the construction. Their first one was skippered by a local fisherman, Jack Hollins. I think it's a family thing. Um, my father was in the shipyard. My uncle Jack was a fisherman. Um, he used to go out and fish for salmon. Um, he worked on the ferry. He loved the water. As a family, we knew the river. We were warned about not getting in the river. We were frightened of it because we knew how deadly it was. In late 61, we heard that some men had fallen in the water and were drifting upstream on the flood tide. In the gathering dusk, one of the ferries set off upstream looking for these men. And by a marvelous set of circumstances, the three men were picked up some mile or more above the work site. Jack Holland's safety launch had joined the search, but when the men were rescued, he turned for home, unaware that a tanker, the Wisedale H, was heading towards him. We, um, on the Wisedale H, were bound for Swansea from Sharp Nest. As I remember, it was, uh, it was a very cold night. When all of a sudden, about 6.30 p.m., there was this loud crashing noise and we thought, crikey, we've hit one of the marker posts. And we ran up on deck and we were shocked to see that we had hit a, uh, a launch and the launch was smashed up between our, the two bows uh, with one man clinging to the wreckage, shouting that his mate was in the water. We turned on the big searchlight which was mounted on top of the wheelhouse, trained it into the water and we could see this man in the water, with his hand, hands above the water and his head there, and suddenly he just slipped away. It was just, just this vision of this man, and it was as, as peaceful as that. Jack Hollins survived the collision, but his mate was lost. My name is Deborah Jones. I am the eldest daughter of John Newton, who was the first man to die during the building of the first Seven Crossing. He was happy, had a lovely sense of humour. He was a lovely father. The body was never found, despite searching and the lifeboat going out and to this day, never been found. I don't think my mother said anything else other than he jumped into the water to save somebody. Her way was say nothing and just get on with it. And that's what she did. This was the first incident that had occurred on the construction site where serious injury or loss of life had occurred. And so it was quite a sobering period.